have been talking about doing the impossible. And we talked about the foundation. This started on Thursday and the word of God had blessed us immensely. The word of God had blessed us immensely from Thursday until Friday and Saturday. You have the opportunity to get from the media the revelation that had come as foundation and key to doing the impossible. Or you go to the social media and see with your data how to keep listening. So I'm not to go backward, I'm going forward. We've talked about that doing the impossible is about alignment. By the grace of God, my own case of doing what many people in many areas, especially in this part of the world, will say, oh, it's impossible to do that. I've used that as a case study to try to show because I don't know another. Paul used to speak about his experience as a Pharisee. He talked about how he met Christ. He talked about what he had suffered in Christ. As a preacher, God first of all gives you a test, a story that will become a message and a testimony unto people. So when you hear me talk about my experience, that is why God gave them to me. And it is to inspire you, whatever you are going through, to know that you can have your own testimony. So some people will say, but why is he talking? That's the message. God told me in 2006, the first time I preached in an international audience, or before an international audience, may have been more than 50,000 people in the charismatic conference of the Catholic Charismatic Renewal of Nigeria with delegates across parts of Africa and from Europe, from Rome especially. Accidentally and providentially, the person who was to speak was built to travel to the U.S., and I was just young and coming as a, a Catholic priest. He knew the grace of God in my life before I was ordained. He saw the grace working. And he told me, Father Patrick, you will represent me. The people in the, in the central level, they did not know. They thought he would be the one. If he had told them, they would say, no, we don't want a boy to come and preach. So he told me I prepared. Until I went up there, nobody knew that it's not him who will preach. So when I went there, they were hesitating to give me a microphone because they didn't know what I came there to do. But by the time I finished preaching, they said that was a message. They kept selling it across Nigeria, ordering it and ordering it and ordering it. The grace of God was so powerful and so glorious. Till today, many people in that circle will not forget that day. It was a revolution. It was in that event God spoke to me in 2006. That's 18 years ago. God spoke to me, you don't have a message for this generation. You are a message to this generation. It was during that occasion. After I finished preaching and the whole place was alight, was on fire, and it was a big thing. It was a big moment. I was surprised myself. I didn't know I could fit into it standing before thousands of people. It will not be less than 50,000 of people and speaking as a young man and the impact it had that for months people were ordering the message, ordering the CD and asking for it in different dioceses. In that amazement, God spoke to me. Like, don't be excited because you are preaching a message that what you have, what you have is not a message, that you are a message. Now, if you listen to the story of my life and encounter me, 
you will know my life is a message. God told me that 18 years ago, I thought it was not God. But I remember, because I know how he speaks to me. But I couldn't understand. How will a young boy like me, struggling to just, just wake up daily and be a priest? And you say, I am a message. But I have not forgotten it. So I am standing here 18 years later. And seven years after I took the decision to be here, I can tell somebody, I'm a message. And people are studying me. Catholic priests across Nigeria, they are studying me. People follow me. People watch to find out what is happening. People have updates. People are trying to find out. Because people have had experiences, greater grace and deeper experiences. But the courage to do what I did and the fear of how it will end up till today. Somebody called the other time. And... I don't know if I will betray him if I mention the name. Somebody like David Oyedepo has never met this person, does not know this person, but called him from nowhere and said, your calling is not where you are. You have to take that decision. Like almost six years have passed or eight years have passed. He was invited, he sat with the man. He said, it took me by 12 midnight to sit in his own space and say, go and pray and take decision. As a last time, last time he spoke, he told me, every time we speak, he said, Father Patrick, pray for me. Pray for me. Six years later, nobody called me from a strange place to say, but he knows it's true. He has walked on the street of a place like Birmingham. Places are brought up. People will say, man of God. I have never known you, but the Lord is saying where you are is not where your call is. Go and take your decision. I have never had such experience. Mine was a private conviction. He has had those signs. He has contact abroad. He has, he's older than me in the priesthood, just that I'm older than him in age. He's almost 50. He will turn 50. Now, this started when he was, before he was 40, he started or so. Now, he's going to be 50. So, why? Because he cannot see how he will look like. He's asking God, show me how he will look like. God has not shown him. God doesn't show people. I'm sorry that I had to mention the name of a mighty man just to let you know how this thing for some people. But he has not been able to find it. I am not better. He's a better man. Better man in many areas. It's just the mercies of God. Because he told me, you are what? A message. So when I talk about it, this is what for me is, it means to do impossible. For you, I don't know what it means to be do impossible. And the secret that has helped me, that God had to teach me before, during, and now, is that first of all, you have to align. That means I could not have taken this decision for any personal reason. If I did that by now, nobody will need to wish me evil. Nobody will need to predict anything. It took me years of processing, examining myself. Why do I, why, why should I do it? Why, what is involved in this? Is it pride? Before somebody will say, don't mind, it's a pride. He wants to be on his own. Let's see how we go. I had to weigh all of that. Is it because I'm gifted? By the grace of what I recognize, I can do few things effortlessly. That is called gift. Gift is what enables you to do what others struggle to do, but you do it effortlessly. By the grace of God, I have one or two of such areas that I don't have to struggle to do things. Not many, maybe one, maybe two. So I had to ask myself, so is it because I have grace that I can inspire people? It's one of the things God has given to me. I can easily inspire people and move people. It's what I have recognized. I can easily move people. I can easily inspire people. Is it, is it, is it, is it, what is this about? It took me years of crying, of fasting, of praying and as a Catholic priest celebrating mass 
Midnight mass. When a Catholic priest, when we talk about midnight mass, it means <laughs> it's not a different mass. It's just like it's so important that you rise up as a priest and go and stand at the altar as a priest and do the highest or the highest duty and the highest prayer of the Catholic priest is this breaking of bread when something happens and you go and stand at the altar and speak those words it means it is a big issue and if you write, rise late at night and be doing that for a long time that means that thing is really if you do it on behalf of somebody it means you have really committed to that person and that thing is, is a very difficult thing I did that for months and for years trying to ask Yagatri Indian let it end. Let this madness end. It did not. It increased. Here I am. A come is here. Remember the day I told the come and his team. At a point, I was very close to them. I knew a come 11 years ago. It must have been in 2013 or 14 when the thing started. I invited them. He and one or two other people said, go pray for me. This is what is in front of me. It looks like it will happen. And the fear, and the text is sent. He said, how what you represent will go down the drain. Everything you have done will be wiped out. Is that not true? That's the message he sent. He said, you cannot do this kind of thing. You have to listen again to hear. That's it. So sometimes God gives us witnesses. I didn't invite him to Grace Family. <laughs> so he's a witness. He knows a few things about my call and my heart and my passion. I have few witnesses around me. So why are we standing where we stand, sir? It's not luck. In spiritual matters, there is no luck. Write it down. In spiritual matters, there is no what? No luck. So we are not here by luck. Heaven does not recognize luck. Heaven works by principles there are laws spiritual laws governing operations in the heavenly ministry is not a church thing listen to me ministry like my standing here is not social event or it's not a social reality ministry has a social dimension the social aspect of ministry, oh, we gather, we have a, because man is about society. Society is the organization of men, the, the presence of human beings, the organization and the structure to make human life meaningful. That's what society is all about. It can be intentional, can be primitive and spontaneous, but that is just it. That's what society but ministry is not a social thing. Ministry is not economic thing, primarily. Oh, we need money to do things. That's why since we came here, we moved in here. The things are incom not completed in no area is completed. Nothing, everything. But you know, I don't stand here to talk about it. Because it's not the main thing. There's something bothering me. Every time I'm asking, am I doing at this point what I should have done? That's it. My, pl my plan, my, my trust in ministry is to raise people that can sit down and see things not being beautiful and they make themselves available. That I can talk less. It's not to be standing and be talking about certain things. It insults the grace of the call and I cannot stand it. Cannot stand it. I'm a prophet and I think prophets walk by rules. If you mix up the rule, you lose the stool. I, yeah, if you're going to walk as a prophet of my order, not a prophet like, you know, I'm not a prophet who will come here and be seeing and be, you know, I'm talking about bringing a word from God to order human life. If you miss it, you miss it. You will live by strict codes. And I'm not just a prophet, I'm a warrior. And warriors walk by somebody like Samson lost his life because as a warrior, he mixed up, he missed the rule. So we are, we are guided by few things that make us weird. That some of you don't see me as a pastor, you will love me to be. As a pastor, you have known, because you don't know the governments over me. 
You don't know the rules of my call. There are things I cannot do. Not that they are bad. They are acceptable. But in the rules of my call. Samson, there were rules before he was born. He said there will be no razor on his head. Every call has rules. If you break those rules, you may still be alive, but you will lose the call. Lose the grace of the call. I have been taught this. So, I was standing here. It's not a social thing. It's not economic. I'm speaking, there are people I call them by name every day and ask God to bless them because I know they have heart and burden. That once they are blessed, the work will be easy for me. There are people I call by names because I see their passion. But I pray for everybody, speak of our business. And I, just, I did that today. I will still do it. This call, a call is primarily a spiritual reality. That means when I took decision and resigned, there were spiritual implications. The entire heavenly structure, principalities and power that know that God called me and there are things assigned for me to do, they were activated to work. And humans who were opposed to it, they were speaking for the negative aspect of this heavenly to work against. So there are things we have gone through that we cannot talk about. One young man that used to play guitar for us, he's no longer here since we moved from Ibon Hall. He has issues with his legs, so mobility and all of that. He talked about how he was in a meeting. Somebody invited him to his house. He does certain things. And he said, oh, I hear that you also go to that place. He said, the man swore with his life on behalf of a group. As long as I live and as we live, that man can never succeed. The young man said he was so frightened and frozen and asked him, what has he done? He said, I came and told me, he said, ah, that's the one you are fortunate to hear. What of others you don't hear? So why should you die? Don't worry, he's a man. <laughs> that, don't worry, he's a man. The young man said he was so f afraid and all of that. And people moving from house to house telling people, if you go there and people re rejecting their own, because you go there, you no longer associate with us. Families and people doing that as evangelization, moving from house to house. That man is no longer on the side of God. Oh, like a rocket bow. And ministers standing on your altar playing videos of fake men of God abusing people and doing all sorts of things. Say, this is what that man you follow, that is what he has joined. In church during full assembly on Sundays like this, in this city for months, it was a campaign. And then, seven years later, we are here. <laughs> Seven years later, we are here. I'm just sharing this so that you will understand what has happened. Am I communicating? That's just very little. Some of you, you also hear people swearing he cannot have children. And when he says, oh, he has a child. Ah, is it difficult to have a daughter? Let's see how we will have sons. All sorts of things. And the other spiritual ones, that are not permitted to be talked about. The battles of second by second, minute by minute, hour by hour, day by day. Seven years later, you know, I have never called you on emergency. There is never a day you have heard that I couldn't come to church, that I'm at war, and when I'm on the turmoil. There is no day. There is no day. I don't know. Am I communicating? Sorry if I'm boring you. This is what God wants me to let you know. There are days I can tell somebody standing for me and preach. 
and pray because I'm, I'm stressed. I'm doing many things. Sometimes I'm overwhelmed. I don't want to use the word confused, but overwhelmed. On a daily basis, at the things we have to do at the same time, home front. I used to be a Catholic priest, being a somebody's husband, six years, and four children. And then you have to do everything as a pastor, as a leader, as a teacher, teaching all groups. On Tuesday, you are teaching. Wednesday, you have to teach. You have to go on radio. You have to, you know, oversee leadership. You have to, all sorts of things. Sometimes your head goes crazy and you are stressed up. And you tell somebody, oh, maybe on Thursday meeting, just say something. But not an emergency situation. Because the Lord has helped us. The Lord has helped us. Will you rise to your feet? Just say thank you. Raise those hands. Just say thank you. Just say thank you. Just say thank you. Come on. Raise those hands and raise those voices. And say thank you. Say thank you. Just 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 say thank you. Please, even if you don't understand, just say thank you. It is okay. Say it's because I trust God that you will have a day in your life. You can tell your own testimony. And tell God, but for the Lord but for his grace. Please say thank you. Even if you don't love me, even if you don't love God, just say thank you for your own sake because as you say thank you, I am asking God that a day will come in your life that you will go through what people will call impossible and you will come with a testimony. I don't know what you are going through right now. I don't know what faces you or what you face. I may not know your name. I may not know where you live. But I have seen God. I want you to say thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Be seated. This is what, if you tell me, people do what I do all the time, resign all the time, everywhere, and all of that. But every context is different. And what people resign to do, different. <laughs> so the impossible in all of this is that in this short while, all of this. And this past seven years, September this year will make us seven years in the school of the Holy Spirit. Thousands of people, hundreds of people delivered, healed, changed, husbands, marriages restored, all sorts of things. God putting ministry in people's hands. God putting wealth in people's hands. We have seen things. That one is just ministry. It's not church. So what we are talking, this one we are just at the church level. But we are talking about the other ones, pastors of churches, founders of churches, pastors sending their own members and ministers after they have come through the process. This pastor, that's it. Ministering to pastors. And they sit down in the, in the school. You don't even know they are pastors. They don't even tell you they are pastors. And they will tell you what it has done to their own call. And you meet people who say, I have never heard about you. I have never known. God, have, God spoke to me. Go to so-so person, so-so person, so-so person, so-so. And they show up and they are ministers. And you tell them, sit through the school. At the end of it, they now discover why God sent them. So, that is what we are talking about. I don't know if I'm communicating. So the alignment, the secret of all of this is this. And I've been saying it, I've said it in this house. I'm not giving great to, grace to preach today. Maybe just to share this testimony. And bless you. And you make consecration of yourself. And then, by the grace of God, we share, we break bread. And we go into the divisions. That in this few years of gathering here and doing what we do, 
we have come to learn that the secret of all of this, the secret of it is alignment. Sir, this is not luck. Sir, this is not fasting and prayer. I have fasted. <laughs> I have prayed. It's not. I've seen people fast more, who pray more, but they are not getting anywhere. They're not doing anything. God taught me in the process. God spoke to me moment by moment and gave me scriptures that I could not forget. One of the scriptures he gave me, you will not go in haste. <laughs> he told me, I will order your steps and I will be your rear guard in Isaiah. And when it was time, after I had no money in my hand to prepare for the future, he told me, it is time now, the doors are open for you. I said, but I don't have anything. And told me, if you don't leave now, you will regret. So I left without preparation, no money, nothing. No, no savings, nothing. I left, and by this time, by this time, seven years ago, there was no money, there was nothing. But we knew Great Awakening was coming. And a friend that I did not tell I would resign, somebody in South Africa, was in South Africa, sent me a message. Get off internet. He saw all the toxic, all the things going on against that I could kill me if I would read them. He said, don't go on internet. He told me, I'm coming to Nigeria. Once I come in, I will see you. He arrived in Nigeria and looked for us. Bishop, Bishop Joe, remember, visited us in some law when the remnant, we used to go to some Bishop Joseph and a couple of us, some are no longer here with us, people like Giru and all of that, wonderful people. Visited. We sat down that evening in my sitting room and told me, so what plans have you made? I said, no plans. <laughs> Asked me, what plans have you made? No plans. No plans. He said, yeah. Wrote a check of five million naira and gave to me. That's how B Bot was born. Announcement. Namu yum, namu yum, namu yum. It looks like namu yum. It looks like it looks like the whole world. I'm telling you, I'm telling you as it was. By this time, today is fourth. By this time, seven years ago, no plan, no money, just that we had set the dates on the first. But nothing. 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 No, no money to do anything. And I want to bless God for a woman, Vera Otto, a wife of Inyoto, sent me the first 500,000 naira, and that was all. That 500,000 naira was there. And what was needed was millions. Not 500,000, but that was first seat money. I will never forget that. will never forget that. And I kept it. So when the 5 million naira came, billboard, announcement on radio, TV, all sorts of things. And people just felt I had so much money that I had prepared for this. Or that there was a sponsor out there telling me, if you take this step, this is what I will do, sir. He give back there was none. I followed instruction. At all points, I made sure it was what God said and how he said it. That's what is called alignment. That it was not about me. I followed instruction. And I've been telling you people openly and few of you privately, I'm not leaving for Iene. I don't want to leave till tomorrow for Iene. Or oh, these four kids. Gideon is capable. She's, a, she's somebody given to me by God. She, she knows God. She loves God. God has a covenant with Yen. Yen is a daughter of covenant. Very deep covenant. So she's not the reason I will leave tomorrow. So insignificant. I don't live for these children. They are not the reasons I wake up. They are not. I don't pray much for them. Just have covenant with God over them. That's all. And say a few words, anoint them, lay hands on them when I can, or he continues to do that. 
in absence, I just speak and bring them to God in covenant. But I pray for you. Spend all the time about it. So they are not the reason. So I'm not saying become and deton, you send it. No, that's not a covenant I had with God at the beginning of this call, and it is not now, and it will not be forever. I'm not here for any purpose. The only purpose is that why did you come to a young boy and told him, go home, your people need you, I missionary to your people. Why did you come into my life? Why did you change my life and give me this, this that I carry? Let's fulfill it, that's all. Everything is to serve that. That's the center. That's what makes me a friend to some people. And no matter what some people will do, I cannot be close to them. That's what makes me associate with some people, some groups, and some groups, no matter how much they try. Because every day I'm trying to find out how does this serve the purpose? It is called alignment. If you ask me what's the secret, that's the secret. The devil checks me every day to find out why I stand. And the reason nothing has, all the storms, yesterday I had to say it. Every time we have children, it's been death and life. I've never mentioned it. And I've never asked anybody. Nobody ever knows when, my, when the first lady is, is in labor. Don't tell no human being on earth. I don't tell people pray for me. There is, we have had four children. This one, this is why I said don't be on radio. Those on the internet, fine, fine. But you can just hear this so that you know what it means to align. What we have been through that you will never know. If in, every, in some pregnancy, like some children, I don't want to mention their name. Specific one or two children. From the first month of the pregnancy till the last moment of labor, every day is conversation of death. She does not tell me and I don't tell her. Threat every day. You wake up, you are hearing like somebody speaking to you. We will kill. This one is the last. You begin young lady. This one cannot. It's, and they are telling her there was a time they had to say in a big, large congregation, just just numb them move, just play like play and say, I want to die. Endless voices persuading us. Just say, you know, like the careless things we say over ourselves, the devil uses that. Like you telling your husband, Maya, you walk by the end of Okpa. Or to women, you follow when you are young, band in an echo. No, we have we have learned. God has given me grace to say some of these things so that you will know what we mean when we say we have been proven these seven years. Just, just say like, just joke. Just joke. Not one day. Not, that's throughout the pregnancy. Just say it. While that is going on with her, my own is going on. She cannot make it this time around. Prepare to marry another person. And that's what the devil had been planning and many people had been saying. Kill them. In some cases, suggestion will be made. Don't worry. When she dies, you can marry so so person. Absolutely. On a daily basis, not in dreams, you are walking, it is talking. You So each time you hear us come back to church and we carry baby, and we, we don't tell you pray for us. We don't tell you. All of that has been to prove. I had to be the first one to prove God. Absolutely. That's why in all of this, no intercessor. The closest person to me knows in ministry. He was sent by God to pray for me. And he has been with me for 18 years. I have never told him, pray. The first lady is in labor. Pray. We are going to. He does not know anything. Whatever God reveals to him. And some people will say, go and say, oh, pray. The first lady, the children, they are under attack. It's okay for tomorrow. If you see attack, won't you die? And they say, you know, I cannot tell them because they will not believe. It's okay for Mono. What do you see? And we just keep quiet. And we just behave like we are fools. Like we don't see. We don't know anything. In Ibom Hall, some people have come intentionally just to torture and hammer. She went into the restroom one day to use the restroom. The Holy Spirit just said, don't. 
and she had to come out. Because that place had been prepared, waiting for her. That's the fine line we have walked these seven years. If I had any motive, if I had any reason that is about me, it would have ended by now. The secret before God, before man. There was a season in Ibom Hall that you, you, you hear me pray. I said, don't, God, don't give me anything until you give me the whole of you. Remember, the King Emmanuel Jackson caught that season. I prayed it in secret until God asked me. Because I told God, don't give me life. Don't give me anything. Give me all of you. It was consecration season. One of those days, God woke me up in a place of retreat and told me, how much of God do you want? I said, I want all of God. <laughs> I'm sincerely speaking audibly because I look for God because I knew that this whole thing, if it is not God, why am I here? Say, God, I don't want anything. And if it is not, you take my life. I made it clear to God over there. I'm standing here because by his mercies, I will always make mistakes because I'm a human. I will always be imperfect because I'm a human. But I'm not standing on my desire. I'm not standing on my needs. I didn't send myself. I fought against this decision for years. I yielded to have peace. And I have peace. It come knows the first seven days I went to pray. For the first time, she said, let me confront this whole thing. I said, let me pray. I shut down everything. At the end of it, that was last week of October in 2016. God told me, so what are you still doing there? It's time. I wrote down my resignation. That was 2.16 October. <laughs> but the fear almost killed me. I never told anybody after that. I would have died of fear. Where will I go to? Who will understand me? If my father will hear this from the grave, what will he, what will he say? If people hear things in the grave. I lived with that fear for months, for days, second by second. And you don't know what I went through. I'm standing here with full assurance of rest and peace. Rise to your feet. To God be the glory. To God be the honor. To God. For oh, to God, to God be to God be to God. To God, 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 to God,
to God be all the glory to God be the to God To God, to God, to God, to God, to God, to God, to God. Oh, to God, to God, to God, The God who called me has given me rest. You shall have rest. God sent you to me to lead you and to guide you and to pastor you. I want to let you know that God has helped me. He shall help you. Whatever God had put in this call to help somebody like you, to give rest to somebody like you in your own circumstance, I willingly submit to the Father of mercy that you will receive that help today in the name of Jesus. Thirty-one years ago, he told me, "If I am the one sending you, I will give you everything you need." I can testify that in these thirty-one years, he has not failed. At every point of the need of this call, at every point of the need of this call. He will show me, even when I am unfaithful, even when I resist his will, even when I'm stubborn, and when one person who is used, maybe is no longer available, or one thing or the other, before he will reach the point of no longer being available, he will raise another person from 1993 till now. Seasons change, people also change. He brings people. But in every season, there is always one person or two people or three. But there must be somebody. It's a testimony. That is why you don't hear me come here and we talk too much about money. I am not sent to do that. We need money to do the work of God. But I believe that when somebody willingly offers their heart, that the one who told me, I will give, will come through that person and give to that person. And then the person can share. I stand here today, on this day,
God knows I preach. You know I, I'm given word to teach. But today, God woke me up, didn't give me any word. And when he does that, I know him. But let me share with you two, three things that he has put in this core that you also know. I have talked about help. I don't know where you are right now. At every stage in your life, you need a help to get to another help, another level. I don't know what stage you are right now. I just gave a testimony about somebody who was outside the country. He's the one who reached me. He's the one who brought himself. He's the one who acts. What I have not told you is that he told me, make a budget for one year. How much you need so that I can be provided. I did. God did not allow me to make the budget. We have never discussed it. Somebody told me, make a financial plan for one year so that I know how much it will require. Sir, I never made it. Why? The Holy Spirit didn't allow me. He didn't allow a man to be in charge of it. We have never discussed it. I didn't make it. The Holy Spirit didn't permit me. Why? He didn't want that to happen. Because that would have had implications. He had goodwill. He's a financial person. Very organized. He does things by budget and plan. But the Holy Spirit was saying, in this case, I am the budget. I am the plan. I speak over you from the oil that did not allow me to have budget by which God has financed me as the budget and the sponsor of the budget. Receive help from above in the name of Jesus. Whatever is the name of that help, I have seen it. I have touched it. I am not asking for what I don't know. I know God helps. I have been helped. Now, it is your turn. After seven years, receive help from above in the name of Jesus. God be the glory to God be the honor to God all adoration for it oh to God to God to God to God I don't know who told you you cannot make it It is not an individual that told me. Many people. I'm not here because of anything. I'm here because he has helped me. You will get there because he has helped you. On this seventh year, that I have seen rest. I make a covenant with the God of my call, my Father, my God and my King. The one who loves me and has spared me, who has adopted me for son and for government. I stand in a covenant with you over this one. <laughs> Families, children, singles, 
married, women, men, orphans, widows, widowers, divorced, separated, single mothers, single fathers. Those who know where they are going to, those who are yet to know where they are going to, those who are clueless, those who don't know what to do with their lives. Seven years ago, I didn't know what to do with my life. I just took a step and today I'm not alone. Oh, Papa, this is the covenant of this call. And this is the only reason you send your son. And this is the only reason you sent me. That the helpless will see you as helper. <laughs> that the hopeless will find you as hope. That the lowly will find you as the lifter. That the sick will find you as healer. That the oppressed will see you as liberty. Oh, that those in darkness will see you as light. That those in prison will see you as a liberator. Oh, pour out your head. Pour out your head. Pour out your head in the name of Jesus Christ. Worship, worship. Just be seated for a while. While you sit, you're going to be very consciously talking to God as an individual. My life is a message. He told me 18 years ago, you don't have a message for this generation. You are a message. The secret is that he came into my life. He came. I didn't look for him. He came. I didn't pray. He came. Nobody in my family will have nominated me for this position. My father will not. My mother will not. None of my siblings. Nobody will ever knew me. No one will ever knew me. But he came. On this day, just ask him for one thing, that he will come to you. And I ask you for one thing, that you will accept him. That's all. That's all. That's all. That's all. Please, you will accept him. Please. And I will pray for you and we will break bread. And I will trust God for miracles. Something you will use to remember seven years. I'm going to ask God. I'm going to ask my father, the one who has helped me, that as you received communion today, he will give you one thing. At least one thing. Several things, but at least one thing that will make you remember these seven years, the rest of your life. Is there anybody who can agree with me over that? Something. Something. And I want you to write that thing. Because throughout this month, I'll be praying over it. And I want you to also pray. Every Sunday, we'll be praying over it. All Sundays in July, in August, doing impossible. Next month, we will engage speed 
being helped by the wind of God in advance. These two months, we are remembering the seven years in ministry outside the college church. So, write it anytime you can between now and next Sunday. For those who already came with it, fine. Even if you don't write it, just have from the issue of writing means it gives, support, gives us opportunity to focus. Let's look at Revelation chapter 3 and verse 20. Revelation 3. Just this verse. Behold, can we read it together? Let's read it together. read it again. I stand at the door and knock. Again. Hmm. Let's read that in NIV. What does NIV call dying? Let's read it together. That is simpler. I will eat with him. When we talk about initiation in witchcraft and different things, eating is very important. Eating is very symbolic. Eating is communion, is fellowship. People die because of what they eat. People live because of what they eat. Food brings sickness. Food brings health. Food is a covenant experience. When you are not at peace with somebody, even if you are very hungry, you find it difficult to eat with that person. Is that correct? So when you eat with somebody, it's a sign of sharing. It means the problem of that person is your problem. The joy of that person is your joy. For many years, for about 30 years, I've been careful about eating. Yes, I don't want to go into that. I know the meaning of food. So when the scripture says, you will eat with me, I didn't come to preach. Scripture talks about the elders in Exodus who ate with the Lord on the mountain. They ate, they feasted. That was not a literal thing. It means there was exchange. There was fellowship. There was communion. The last thing Jesus did with his disciples before he left them, he ate with them. After that, they never had opportunity to fellowship with them. After eating with them, he left. And he took three of among, among them, prayed, agonizing. He did not pray with them. He just took them. He never prayed with them after that. They did not have any other meeting that was formal. He took the three, says, stay here. Wait with me, watch and he went and prayed alone. The last thing he did, he ate. Eating for me is so important. I wedded, I wedded a couple recently, and I shocked my wife. I was so excited about two of them, the young man and the young woman. And I told them, I long to eat something on your wedding day. And the first lady was so completely petrified. <laughs> like, you will eat? I say, yes. I am so happy about these two people. 
their story, how God sent them to me, what they have become in my hand by his grace, and that their wedding, they met in the school of the Holy Spirit, two different people with different stories they came, and God just turned their lives with witnesses from both sides, and they got married. I just felt like, I want to eat food on your wedding day, your, your reception. And they told my cousin, and they prepared something, and I ate it. <laughs> and I, I wanted to remember that moment forever, that I asked for food, and they made it, and I ate just to remember, to share. I just wanted something. It blessed me so deeply that I ate to remember. Food is deep. In the satanic world, in our cult kingdom, in whatever, there is ritual eating by which they cement their yokes that you cannot come out. In witchcraft, when people begin to go out, they are called out, their spirits are called out. The high point, they give people things to eat. By that covenant is strengthened the day you want to leave us that's why witchcraft is a very crafty useless spirit because of lies and deceit it's i don't i don't want to go into talking about it now issue of eating and drinking and each of what is eaten eaten and taken as drink poisons and deepens the covenant, the bond. Because if you eat with somebody consistently, your bond with that person grows consistently. Couples who don't eat together, you are not doing well. I find it very difficult. Any food at home, when I'm on retreat, is different. At home, if I don't eat with the first lady, I feel that either I'm cheating her or she's cheating me. We have to eat together. It doesn't make sense doesn't make sense. Not eating together. It's a vow we made to ourselves. We'll eat every day together, except we are not available. Eating strengthens bond. Eating makes you share in the life of the other person. And the other, that is at a physical level. But when it comes to spiritual, it is deep. Just because when you hear my voice and allow me to come in, I will share with you. I will eat with you. You will take from me what I have and I will take from you what you have. That's what it means. When you eat with somebody, you eat what the person has. If the person is sick, it can be transferred. Am I communicating? Yeah, there are certain communicable diseases that by eating with the person, you take. So, that's what that scripture is talking It's talking communion. It's talking participation, communion. But I am knocking. Many people eat communion, but they are not eating with him. And he is not eating with them. Why? Their hearts are closed. They don't allow him to come. They come to church with their sins. Go back with their sins. Come back. Come from darkness to church. Go back to darkness. And they deceive themselves and just think they are deceiving others. And the devil lies to them. As I'm talking, there are different conversations going on in their head. They are looking at time, appointment in the afternoon, social event, dikairong, and all of that. They eat, but they don't eat with him. And because of that, nothing is taken from them that it will kill them. And nothing is given to them that will bless them. Take a decision now. As I'm talking, it's at the door of your heart knocking. It says, if anyone, if it is you, I trust God that it is you today. If you are already a child of God, it becomes higher consecration. Why do you leave? So you open the door of your heart, the door of your marriage, the door of your sexual life. Your dating. Is it honoring God? Is it in righteousness? You open the door of your business. You open the door of your personal life. You say, I will come. Your life will no longer just be your life. 
it will be our shared life we will play it as it pleases heaven as it pleases the father I will take from you your sins I will take addictions and pains I will take waste and shame I will take sickness and diseases I will take yokes and bonds and chains then I will give you peace I will give you joy I will give you health I will give you strength he is my all I have experienced him. When I'm weak and nobody knows, he's there with me and for me. When I make mistakes and trip off and wander away and go my stubborn way, in these 33 years of walking with him, many of such moments, it just follows you, brings you back to himself and causes you to cry and to say, I'm sorry. And then it touches your heart, heals you, and restores you. I have seen him as a friend. I've seen him as Lord. He's enough for me. I love you, Lord. All been held in your arms. Until I lay my
will you let him come in will, it, will you let him come in just stretch your hand in front of you and just ask Jesus to come repent of your sin don't worry he will forgive you just confess and tell him you know I cannot save myself you know I cannot help myself and if you are standing here as a child of God can you reconsecrate your life can you give him your whole life can you give him your marriage can you give him all you have? Tell him, take over. Be my all. Please don't waste this moment. Whether you are sitting or you are standing, I would prefer if you can't stand. Just talk to him. It is not emotional. It is intentional. Tell him, come. If you are already living his life, tell him, do not leave me. And don't let me leave you. Don't let me go astray. Correct me. Bring me back. If there are areas of your life you have been struggling to surrender, now surrender. If there are areas of your life you have been struggling to surrender, now surrender. He says, I will eat with you. Right now, he's eating with you. My Jesus, I love you. I look down at my God. Ah uh... 
Say with me, Lord Jesus Christ. And when we say, I believe in you, it has to come from your heart. It's not an emotional thing, it's an intentional thing. Say, I believe in you. At this moment, I turn from everything. All my works, my abilities, my sins, I turn to you. I want to give you a personal 15 seconds. Are there specific sins? Anybody here? Specific sins you are repenting from? Can you confess to the Lord directly and just talk to him? And trust his mercy to forgive you. Are there strugglings? Are there addictions? You are someone who has never really submitted to him. Can you now for the first time so repent of from every sin, my ways of life, my former ways. If you have ever taken anybody's heart, take my own heart. If you have ever changed anybody, change my life. Can you say those words? Somebody taking a decision for the first time. That's the beginning of my call. It changed my life. Can you tell him, come and take, come and change my life. Just lift up those hands. Just tell him, Lord, come into my life. Change me this life. Change all of me. Take me all. Say, say those words with me. Say, Lord Jesus Christ. Take all of me. Say, Lord Jesus Christ. Take all of me. Give me all of you. Your righteousness for my sins. Your light for my darkness. Your glory for my shame. Your stripes for my sickness. Your life for my life. Your father for my foundation. And my ancestry. Your spirit for my ancestral spirits. Take the whole of me. Now go ahead and speak in those words. Take the whole of me. Say those words personally. Let it be intimate. Let it be personal. Start all over again. If you had fallen, come back. Come back to life. Come back to life. Come back to life. Come back to righteousness. Come back to holiness. Come back to strength. Come back to who you have been made in Christ. Come back to sonship. Come back to newness. Come back to life. Come back to health. Come back to joy. Lift up those two and say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, every covenant over my life that I have made intentionally or unintentionally, covenant made on my behalf by the ancestors covenants made over me by parents in any way I'm walking under the covenant of Satan consciously I renounce now say in the name of Jesus Christ I renounce you Satan and all your works and lies. I renounce your deceit and your pleasures. I renounce the work of the marine. I will renounce the work of a cult. I will renounce the work of secret cult. I renounce the work of witchcraft. I renounce darkness. Say, I give my life totally now. 
to Jesus Christ. The way, the truth, and the life. Amen. Lift up your right hand and say, from today, from today. Jesus is my way. Jesus. Jesus is my truth. Jesus, Jesus is my life. Jesus. No other thing has power over me. No. Say, I'm free from every other power. And they are forbidden from touching me. They are forbidden from harming me. They are forbidden from stopping me. Say, if any power could stop Jesus from rising from the dead, then it can stop me. But since no power could stop him from rising, say, I now rise. Speak your rising. I, I rise in freedom. I rise in liberty. I rise in healing. I rise in forgiveness. I rise in restoration. I rise in wealth. I rise in breakthrough. I rise in favor. Say, I rise. I rise to doing impossible. I rise. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lay your right hand on your forehead. Say, say the Spirit of Jesus. Come into my life. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, send me your spirit to teach me, to guide me. Say, send me your spirit. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, fill me with your spirit. Let your spirit heal me. Let your spirit lead me. Let your spirit help me to please you from this moment. Lay those hands on your forehead. Let's just have a moment of quiet. Holy Spirit, I just ask you, please. You came into my life 33 years ago. I didn't look for you. And I said, because you have saved me, use me to save others. This is what this call is about. That's why I'm standing here. That's why I want to do this till the end. And that's why I want to do it till the ends of the earth. Come into these lives. Feel them. Take over their lives. Speak to them. Change them. Make the work of Jesus available in their lives. Bring healing. Bring liberty. Bring freedom. Bring change. Bring transformation Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus, I break every yoke in your life. Amen. I cast out the foul spirit of adultery and fornication. Amen. I cast out the spirit of drugs and every form of addiction. Amen. I cast out hate and rebellion. I cast out sickness and every form of bondage. Amen. I cast out witchcraft spirit or cold spirit. Every form of secret cold spirit. I cast out the marine spirit. Amen. I declare from today by the finished work of Jesus, harm from hell will not touch you. Amen. As you eat of this communion, everything Jesus came to do, which he finished on the cross, and made available to me in the Holy Spirit to be his witness as you eat this communion. All of that shall manifest in your life Amen. in diverse healing Amen. and deliverance. Amen. And you shall do your own impossible. Amen. From this moment, I declare the acceptable year of your rest. Amen. Say, I rest. Amen. 